The Connemara Chaos is a new Jupiter Industries cruiser added to Infinite Lagrange fairly recently, and my goodness, this thing is an absolute powerhouse. In today's blueprint breakdown, we're going to be taking a look at this brand spanking new cruiser, getting under the hood and seeing what makes it tick. Is it worth adding to your fleets? Is it better than the cruisers you already have? And if you do want to fly it, then how are you going to enhance it? Where do you put those precious tech points? Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another Blueprint Breakdown video for Infinite Lagrange. Now before we jump in on this one, I want to give a big shout out to Arthur Don, who recently contacted me on YouTube and said, hey, are you ever going to do a Connemara Chaos video? At which point I replied, like an idiot, I've already done one, only to go through my own channel looking for a link for him to realise that I never actually released it. So today we're going to be jumping back into this one, I'm going to be taking a second look because there were some graphical issues on that one and we're going to be going through it again. If you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you want to keep me making content like this, if you want to support this channel, going that extra mile, you can do so by heading across to patreon.com forward slash Captain Benzi, where you can pledge to support there. I do also have a Redbubble merchandise store that you can take a look at as well, and see if there's anything there that interests you. Right, let's have a look at the Connemara Chaos. Now, it's also really interesting that this was the one that we started talking about today, because as I logged in for my rewards, please note that I am in the Antonta system at the moment, so I can't really showcase much exciting and jumping in on the actual numbers, etc. But I did open a blueprint box this morning and get the first step towards the plasma type. So do stay tuned, because there will be another video on this one once I have it fully unlocked in about four or five years or so. Now, as you can see with the Connemara Chaos, I have 67 tech points put into this bad boy already because I love this that much. And some people are going to call me crazy, but there are some explicit scenarios where this is just an absolutely kick-ass cruiser, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, if you look at its combat rolls, there doesn't actually appear to be all that much really in its favour. A B for anti-ship capability, C for anti-air, and C for siege doesn't really sell it that much, alongside a B for defence, and okay, A for sort of your industrial side of things and engineering, but who cares if it's particularly cheap? You know, by this point you can build things like Callistos and Chimeras, so is the Connemara Chaos even worth it? Well, first things first, as always, I like to talk about the naming conventions on the Jupiter Industries ships. Did you know that the Connemara Chaos is actually appear an area of ice on Europa? It's this really messed up, chaotic looking terrain that's caused essentially by the ice melting, shifting and rotating and then refreezing. Check it out on Wikipedia, it looks so cool. It's a really interesting area of space and Europa itself is a really interesting pseudo planet, moon, whatever you want to call it. Scientific terminology is not overly clear on that these days due to, well, yeah, a lot of things, the fallout from the whole Pluto thing a few years back. Anyway, back to the ship. Firepower stats, on the other hand, oh boy, does this thing start absolutely insane. 12,960 anti-ship fire basic. That's before we've upgraded. There is nothing on this ship. I'm in Antontis. I cannot apply any of the upgrades or enhancements to here. So you're looking at this at its raw value. Remember, by time you have upgraded that weapon, that's going to be 30% higher already. And then you've got all the actual tech point enhancements as well. Yeah, they're right to give it a C rating, I think, on air defense and C on siege fire as well. Nothing particularly special there, but it is, you know, it's not terrible. There are worse ships out there. This is 20 command points, so it is sort of on the higher end of cruisers. Thus, it does take up a bit of your fleet space, but is it worth it? Well, I keep saying yes, but let's have a look at why. First of all, let's go into the additional propulsion system, because like many Jupiter Industries ships, the Connemara Chaos has built-in evasion, 15% as standard. That is not to be sniffed at, that makes the Connemara Chaos actually surprisingly difficult to hit, which means it doesn't take much damage, and then you can go in and you can enhance that evasion by a further 16% in total, and oh boy, this is pretty much the first thing I go for with the Connemara Chaos just to give it that added survivability. 
If we were to have a look in its combat ro uh, roles, you will see that it is a middle row ship, which means anything like, say, a Chimera or a Casso 66 will be taking that firepower first, but you never know. And if, like me, you tend to be running frigate fleets with a few destroyers, uh, uh, like frigate and destroyer fleets with a few cruisers here and there, then I don't always have front row cruisers, which means the Connemara Chaos is going to be taking some of those hits early on. Thus, going for that additional evasion just gives it a wallop of it extra survivability. For the actual propulsion system, things are pretty standard here. You've just got additional cruising speed and warp speed, nothing at all to get excited about there. Um, as we go in a little bit further, let's have a look at the armor system next. Now the armor on this isn't awful. 61,850 HP with 30 armor. It's a Jupiter Industries ship. They're fairly fragile, but this isn't as terrible as some of the other ones out there. And 10% shields is fairly nice. I mean, it's better than any of the Noma Shipping Group ships have, right? But if we go into the enhancements, everything here is pretty standard. Physical resistance, energy resistance, and ship HP. At this point, early on in building this ship, I wouldn't really worry about these. I do sometimes put in a bit of energy resistance there just to push that all the way up to 20% uh, on its energy uh, on its shield that just helps it survive a little bit longer especially with how many people are running things like Tauruses out there um, it just reduces the damage that those laser weapons use and it is something that is worth considering but the real fun with the Connemara Chaos starts with its bow railgun system Oh boy, the AR-2500C bow-mounted railgun. It is a projectile weapon, so it goes up against the target's armor. It's got a really nice attack priority here. It goes after battleships first, then it absolutely pummels cruisers, then it goes for battle cruisers, um, so battleships, then carriers, then it goes after battle cruisers, cruisers, and auxiliary ships. So this thing is aiming at the big guys right from the start. There's still no battleships in Infinite Lagrange, so we're going straight in at carriers, and the damage this can do to carriers is monstrous, at which point it will then to start to rip apart their battle cruisers and then rip apart anything that's left at that point. Obviously after auxiliary ships go on, it does aim for the smaller ships, but being a railgun, it doesn't have much in the way of particularly strong hit. It is a lot of damage per hit though on this thing, and it does fire relatively quickly for a railgun designed against large targets, but the real fun comes here in the tech point enhancements. First of all, concentrate fire periodically. Sinks all weapons in the system with the primary weapon to focus fire on one single target, reduces cooldown by 80% every 90 seconds for 8 seconds. Now, okay, admittedly, this only lasts for 8 seconds, but having 80% reduced cooldown increases the DPS by a monstrous amount on this. It does that for 8 seconds, then it goes on cooldown for 90 seconds, and then it just opens fire with a barrage again. Take this as soon as you can. Like seriously, this is just insanely good. Of course, you can then add on standard railgun damage. There's a lot of that along with system cooldown reduction um, and there should be some, uh, where is it, rate of fire ones I'm sure. No, I'm imagining that, but we do have the siege damage increase that no one will ever use, system HP that no one will ever use, but we do have the hit rate. Hit rate is a very important skill on the Connemara Chaos. It is a railgun ship. They have atrocious hit rates to begin with. Do go straight for that one there of large target correction, getting the hit rates up against cruisers and higher class ships. I actually tend to go for this as one of the first upgrades. It's all very well and good doing hundreds and thousands of DPS, but not actually ever hitting anything. You need to be able to apply that damage. So going in with that uh, large target correction is a good one to go for once you are facing cruisers and higher. And some people have said to me in the past, well, the aiming mechanism enhancement is only 2% per level, but it does affect everything, including frigates and destroyers. And I've said before, if you are going after frigate and destroyer cr uh, like fleets, then don't bother with the Connemara Chaos. This thing is designed for taking out the big boys. If it's going after frigates and destroys it is going to struggle to hit even with that maxed out even with the support ship which i'll be talking about in just a moment no this is very much an anti-cruiser anti-battle cruiser and anti-carrier ship it will rip those apart as long as you build it correctly it will not do so well against frigates and destroyers even with all the enhancements you can throw at it 
So go for the uh, against cruisers and higher class ships first, then take that concentrate fire periodically, then go after your railgun damage and your cooldown reductions. Now I tend to go for one of the EM ammo enhancements first, then come back for the loading mechanism upgrade because you already have a massive reduction to your cooldown over here and I would rather maximize the amount of damage I can be putting out in that time. And even with the full weapon system cooldown reduction of both of these, you only get basically basically one or two extra shots in that 90 second in that 8 seconds sorry compared to how many it would have without those upgrades at which point one or two extra shots you can get a lot more damage out of going for the straight up railgun damage to start with so go for those then come back for the weapon system cooldown enhancements and this thing just becomes monstrous but i did mention it kind of requires a little bit of support, and this is where things get a little controversial with this ship. And I know some people absolutely hate it when I like recommend this, but I do say if you're going to use something like the Connemara Chaos, then we also need to talk about some of our destroyers. Because if we go down in the destroyer menu here and look at the series, we are of course talking about the tactical type. I've done a video on the series destroyer already, and the tactical is absolutely Bat guano crazy. This is such an underestimated ship. And people say, yeah, but it's eight command points, Benzie. You're adding an extra eight command points to your fleet that could be better used with like Callistos or something else. And I sort of agree to a certain point, but the Connemara Chaos is just so much fun watching it just open fire with that railgun that adding one series tactical destroyer for every three Connemara Chaos you have just is so worth it. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's the tactical UAV system. There is a prioritized support strategy here, which when your fleet includes cruisers, it prioritizes the fire support for them by dispatching aircraft, increases the airport support, aircraft support duration by 30%. Essentially, this thing has three surveillance UAVs. These will each attach themselves to a friendly ship, and if you've got that upgrade, it will prioritize cruisers. It will attach itself to three cruisers and massively increase their hit rate. And again, people say, but yeah, again, it's eight command points. Yeah, it's eight command points per three destroyers and I get it per three cruisers sorry I get it you could be going straight in for something like the Callisto um, anti-ship type again it's 20 command points it's the same amount and it doesn't need all of that right well no it doesn't need that additional support from the series but it's also not quite as good at hitting some of those big ships because a lot of those big ships have anti-missile capabilities and they intercept those torpedoes whereas a railgun there ain't no intercepting a gigantic metal slug shooting across space at the speed of sound. Ultimately, <laughs> the Connemara Chaos does some rather effective damage. I do strongly recommend having the series tactical type in the fleet. For every three Connemara Chaos you have, have one series tactical. Ultimately, if you do end up building the full complement of eight, do go for the three series tactical, because otherwise you've got two of these that are unsupported. It's better to have that one additional UAV supporting a random ship in your fleet. But yeah, again, I like to go for fleets that are mixes primarily of destroyers and frigates with a couple of cruisers sprinkled in. So for me, a destroyer fleet that has eight Connemara Chaos in it deals absolute havoc to everything. Now let me tell you a story from the end of my last server. I don't normally like talking about what happens on my servers, but toward the end, I moved back kind of to where I'd first started with an advanced mining platform, and I just set up there to go and do a bit of roaming and PvP and stuff, um, because it's the end of the server and who really cares? And this one guy just decided that he was going to try and completely table me. Now, I had two fleets blockading my advanced mining platform. I got a whole ton of notifications late at night. It was a bit too late for me to bother logging in and I thought to myself ah screw it if I've lost my fleet we've got like two three days of server left does it really matter I logged in the next morning to find no fewer than 16 combat notifications my two fleets had managed to take out eight of his invading fleets he had then tried to take on my base um, and just utterly failed against that with the defense fleet that was garrisoned there and the Connemara Chaos had just done absolute wonders. That entire destroyer and cruiser fleet had barely taken any damage and had absolutely bodied eight 
incoming attackers of various mixes, including a fleet made primarily of battle cruisers. It was like three, um, three of the marshals and a, cu a couple of the uh, Spear of Uranus and stuff like that. And it just, it felt amazing to wake up the next morning and go, oh, well, okay, I'm probably in emergency like recovery right now. What's happened? And then I just wet myself laughing. I then sent my Connemara Chaos fleet and my other fleet, which had a couple of uh, like smaller ships, mainly destroyer fleet, um, and took out his entire operation. Um, using just two fleets very quickly with no casualties whatsoever. Absolutely crazy, so much fun, and I genuinely put that down to the fact that it was a small, fast, mobile fleet. I had Connemara Chaos in there at the back, in the well, in the middle, I suppose, supported by Series Tacticals. I had a load of things like Quawas in there, um, the Torpedo ones, a load of Taurus, Taurus uh, offensives, um, just my usual kind of frigate and destroyer fleet, some Reliats, uh, Reliat Stealths, um, a load of the Mare Serenitatis, um, some Xeno Stingers, of course, because if you're going to run a frigate fleet, you need Xeno Stingers, because those things are just incredible. But what an experience, just to see the amount of damage that these ships had put out against him, because he'd come thinking, oh, I've got big old battle cruisers and cruiser fleets, and my Connemara Chaos just were having none of it. He couldn't hit anything, I took almost no damage, my series uh, support were just healing everything, everything up with no qualms whatsoever and um, to the point I actually have one of the new auxiliary ships in that fleet as well and just the ability to heal outside of combat is incredible. I really need to do a video on that one as well. But anyway I'm now at the point of rambling on. I love the Connemara Chaos. Okay people are going to say it's not S tier. It's probably not S tier. It's fairly niche in the fact that it is kind of, it feels like a cruiser designed for destroyer fleets um, to help them take out those bigger targets when something comes along. But when one of those bigger targets comes along, oh boy, these are just so much fun. And the more I'm looking at the plasma type, oh boy, bow mounted plasma caster. That just sounds incredible. I cannot wait to hear about this superior firepower, energy weapon, high evasion. Yeah, as used for adjusting ship angles to boost the ship's survivability in combat. Experimental plasma casters capable of direct fire. I can't wait to unlock this one and I will of course do a video the second that I get it. Anyway, folks, maybe you, you've, you've used the Connemara Chaos in the past. Maybe you think I'm completely wrong about this and I'm missing something critical. Please do let me know in the comment section down below. I love having a chat with you folks about Infinite Lagrange, about some of the maths, because there have been times where I have genuinely made mistakes, notably in my mining video, which I've had people correct me. The comments are pinned on that one, um, just to because I think I, I believe in owning up to mistakes and saying, right, okay, well, that, I was wrong about that. Let's talk about it. If you think I'm wrong about the Connemara Chaos, let me know. I would love to know your thoughts and opinions, but please don't come at me with, oh, well, I disagree because so-and-so put it at a, at a B plus in his tier rating. Tier ratings are absolute crap in Infinite Lagrange. People throw together fleets of supposed S-rated S ships only to get absolutely bodied by a well-crafted fleet of supposed b rank ships because those B-tier ships work together perfectly and just absolutely body this eclectic fleet of supposedly S tier. Anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Happy sailing and see you all in Infinite Lagrange.